Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Reading Through the Bible in 365. Uh, we are still in First Chronicles. We're doing chapter 7, 8, and 9. We are still going to be bombarded by names that are hard to pronounce, so my brain is going to hurt. <laughs> so we're doing First Chronicles chapter 7, 8, and 9, and then John chapter 6, verses 22 to 44. So let's get started. The four sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Tola were Uzi, Raphia, Jareel, Jamai, Ibsam, and Shemuel. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. At the time of King David, the total number of mighty warriors listed in the records of these clans were 22,600. The son of Uzi was Isra, 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 I'm assuming, yeah. The sons of Isra were Michael, Obadiah, Joel, and Isaiah. These five became the leaders of clans. All of them had many wives and many sons, so the total number of men available for military service among their descendants was 36,000. The total number of mighty warriors from all the clans of the tribe of Issachar was 87,000. All of them were listed in their genealogical records. Three of Benjamin's sons were Bella, Becker, and Jediel, Jediel. The five sons of Bela were Esben, Uzi, Uziel, Jeremoth, and Eri. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. The total number of mighty warriors from these clans was 22,034, as listed in their genealogical records. The sons of Becker were Zemira, Joash, Eliezer, Eliezer, Elionai, Omri, Jeremoth, Abijah, Anathoth, and Elameth. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. The total number of mighty warriors and leaders from these clans was 20,200 as listed in their genealogical records. The son of Jediel was Bilhan. The sons of Bilhan were Jeush, Benjamin, Ehud, Kenanah, Zethan, Tarshish, and Aishahar. Each of them was the leader of an ancestral clan. From these clans, the total number of mighty warriors ready for war was 17,200. The sons of Ur were Shuppam and Huppam. Hushim was the son of Aher. The sons of Nephtali were Jazeel, Guna, Gunai, um, Jezer and Shillam. They were all descendants of Jacob's concubine, Bilha. The descendants of Manasseh through his Aramean concubine included Asriel. Asriel. Sorry, my nose is running because I have allergies. Um, where did I leave? Okay. She also bore Machir, the father of Gilead. Machir found wives for Huppam and Shuppam. Machir had a sister named Maeka. One of his descendants was Zelophehad, who, who had only daughters. Machir's wife, Maeka, gave birth to a son whom she named Paresh. His brother's name was Shuresh. The sons of Paresh were Ulam and Rechem. The son of Ulam was Badan. 
all these were considered Gileadites, descendants of Maker, Makir, son of Manasseh. Makir's sister, Hamolaketh, gave birth to Ishhad, Abiz, Abizer, and Mala. The sons of Shemida were Ayan, ah, Ayan, Shechem, Likai, and Aniam. The descendants of Ephraim were Shethala, Bered, Tahath, Tehath, Eleida, Eleida, Ela, Elaida, <laughs> Tehath, Zabad, Shuthala, Ezer, and Eliad. These two were killed trying to steal livestock from the local farmers near Gath. Their father, Ephraim, mourned for them a long time and his relatives came to comfort him. Afterward, Ephraim slept with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Ephraim named him Bariah because of the tragedy his family had suffered. He had a daughter named Shira. Shira. She built the towns of Lower and Upper Beth Horon and Uzin Shira. The descendants of Ephraim included Zepha, Reshef, Tila, Tahan, Laden, Amahud, Elisha, Elishama, Nun, and Joshua. The descendants of Ephraim lived in the territory that included Bethel and its surrounding towns to the south, Naaron, Naaron to the east, Gezer and its villages to the west, and Shechem and its surrounding villages to the north, as far as Aia and its towns. Along the border of Manasseh were the towns of Bethshan, Tainak, Megiddo, or Megiddo, Dor, and their surrounding villages. The descendants of Joseph, son of Israel, lived in these towns. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ish, Ishvi, and Bariah. They had a sister named Sarah. The sons of Bariah were Heber and Malkiel, the father of Berzaith. The sons of Heber were Jeflat, Jeflat, Shomer, and Hotham. They had a sister named Shua. The sons of Japhlet were Pasach, Bimhal, and Ashbeth. The sons of Shomer were Ahi, Ahi, Ahai, Roga, sorry guys, loud cars, Hubba, 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 and Aram. The sons of his brother Helam were Zopa, Imna, Shalesh, and Amal. The sons of Zopa were Sua, Harnifer, Shuel, Beri, Imra, Bezer, Hod, Shama, Shil Shilshash, Shil no, Shilsha, Ithran, and Bira. The sons of Jether were Japuna, Japune, Pispa, and Era. The sons of Ula were Era, or Ara, Haniel, and Rizia. Each of these descendants of Asher, who I butchered names of, was the head of an ancestral clan, ancestral clan. They were all select men, mighty warrior, warriors, and outstanding leaders. The total number of men available for military service was 26,000, as listed in their genealogical records. Moving on to more hard-to-pronounce names in Chapter 8. 
Benjamin's first son was Bella. The second was Ashbel. Ashbel. The third was Aera. Aera. The fourth was Noah, as in N O H A H. And the fifth was Rapha. The sons of Bella were Adar, Gera, Abahud, Abishua, Na Naaman, Ahora, Gera, Shep, Shefu, 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 Fan, and Huram. Huram. The sons of Ahud, Ehud, leaders of the clans living in Geba, were exiled in Manahath. Ehud's sons were Naaman, Ahijah, and Gera. Gera, who led them into exile, was the father of Uzzah and Ahihud. Ah 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 I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. After Shaharim divorced his wives, Hushim and Beera, he had children in the land of Moab. His wife, Hadesh, gave birth to jo Jobab, Zibia, Masha, Malcolm, J Jeuz, Sekiah, or Sekia, and Mermith, Merma. These sons all became the leaders of clans. Shaharim's wife, Husham, had already given birth to Abitub and Elpeal, the sons of El Payal were Eber, Misham, Shemed, who built the towns of Ono and Lod and their nearby villages. Bariah and uh, their nearby villages, Bariah and Shema, sorry. They were the leaders of the clans living in Aijalon, and they drove out the inhabitants of Gath. Ahio, Sheshak, Jeremoth, and Zebediah, Arad, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, and Joah were the sons of Bariah. Zebediah, Ze Zebediah Meshulam, Hizki, H Heber, Ishmari, Isliah, Isliah, and Jobab were the sons of El Peal. Jacob, Zikri, Zabdi, Elianai, Zelathai, Eliel, Adiah, Bariah, and Shimrath were the sons of Shemai. Ishpan, Eber, Eliel, Abdon, Zikri, Zikri Hanan, Hananiah, Elam, Antho, Anthothijah, and Iphadiah, Ifda, Ifdiah and Penuel were the sons of Shashak. Shamsherai, Shaharai, Athaliah, Jerashiah, Elijah, and Zikri were the sons of Jeroham. These were the leaders of the ancestral clans. They were listed in their genealogical records, and they all lived in Jerusalem. Jael, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maeka, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jael's other sons were Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth, who was the father of Shemim. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Ab Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Merubbaal. Merubbaal was the father of Micah. Micah was the father of Pithon, Melech, Taria and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Elameth, Asmaveth, 
and Zimri. Excuse me. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Benia. Benia was the father of Raphia. Raphia was the father of Eli Elise Elisa. Eliasa. Eliasa. <laughs> Eliasa was the father of Azel. 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 Azel had six sons. Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shariah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Azel's brother, Eshek, had three sons. The first was Ulam, the second was Jeush, and the third was Eliphalet. Ulam's sons were almighty warriors and expert archers. They had many sons and grandsons, 150 in all. All these were descendants of Benjamin. Chapter 9. So all Israel was listed in the genealogic genealogical records in the book of the kings of Israel. The people of Judah were exiled to Babylon because they were unfaithful to the Lord. The first of the exiles to return to their property in their former towns were priests, Levites, temple servants, and other Israelites. Some of the people from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh came and settled in Jerusalem. One family that returned was that of Uthiah, Uthai, son of Amahud, son of Omri, son of Imri, son of Bani, Bani, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah. Others returned from the Shilonite clan, including Asiah, the oldest, and his sons. From the Zarahite clan, Jeul, returned with his relatives. In all, 690 families from the tribe of Judah returned. From the tribe of Benjamin came Salu, son of Mesh Meshulam, son of Hodiva, son of Hasanua, Abniah, Ibniah, son of Jeroam, Elah, son of Uzi, son of Mikri, and Sh Meshulam, son of Shephatiah, son of Ruel, son of Ib Ibnijah. These men were all leaders of clans, and they were listed in their genealogical records. In all, 956 families from the tribe of Benjamin returned. Among the priests who returned were Jediah, Jehor Jeho Jeho Jehoirib, Jachin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Merioth, Mari son of Aitub, Aitub. Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Other returning priests were Adiah, son of Jer Jeroam, son of Pasher, son of Amal. Malkijah, son of Maasai, son of Adil, son of Jah Jazera, son of Meshulam, son of Meshulamith, son of Immer. In all, 1,760 priests returned. They were heads of clans and very able men. They were responsible for ministering at the house of God. The Levites who returned were Shemaiah, son of Hash Hash Hashab, son of Azrakam, son of Hashabiah, a descendant of Merari, Bakbakar, Bak 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 Haresh, Galal, Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zikri, son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shemaiah, son of Galal, son of of Jeduthun and Berechiah, son of Asa, son of Elkanah, who lived in the area of Netopha. Net the gatekeepers who returned were Shalom, Achab, Talman, Iaman, and their relatives.
Shalom was the chief gatekeeper. Prior to this time, they were responsible for the king's gate on the east side. These men served as gatekeepers for the camps of the Levites. Shalom was the son of Kor, a descendant of Abiasaph from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary, just as their ancestors had guarded the tabernacle in the camp of the Lord. Phineas, son of Eleazar, had been in charge of the gatekeepers in earlier times, and the Lord had been with him. And later, Zechariah, son of Mesh- Meshelamiah, was responsible for guarding the entrance to the tabernacle. In all, there were 212 gatekeepers in those days, and they were listed according to their genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel, the seer, David and Samuel, the seer, had appointed their ancestors because they were reliable men. These gatekeepers and their descendants, by their divisions, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the house of the Lord when that house was a tent. The gatekeepers were stationed on all four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in the villages came regularly to share their duties for seven-day periods. The four chief gatekeepers, all Levites, were trusted officials, for they were responsible for the rooms and treasuries at the house of God. They would spend the night around the house of God, since it was their duty to guard it and to open the gates every morning. Some of the gatekeepers were assigned to care for the various articles used in worship. They checked them in and out to avoid any loss. Others were responsible for the furnishings, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies, such as choice flour, wine, olive oil, frankincense, and spices. But it was the priests who blended the spices. Mattathiah, a Levite, and the oldest son of Shalom, the Korahite, was entrusted with baking the bread used in the offerings. And some members of the clan of Kohath were in charge of preparing the bread to be set on the table each Sabbath day. The musicians, all prominent Levites, lived at the temple. They were exempt from other responsibilities since they were on duty at all hours. All these men lived in Jerusalem. They were the heads of Levite families and were listed as prominent leaders in their genealogical records. Jael, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maeka, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jael's other sons were Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, (coughs) <coughs> excuse me, Zechariah and Miklas. Miklas was the father of Shemim. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Malkishua, Abinadab, and Eshbaal. Jonathan was the father of Meribbaal. Meribbaal was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Malek, Taria, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Elameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Benia. Benia's son was Raphia. Raphia's son was Elasa. Elasa's son was Azel. Azel had six sons whose names were Azrakam, Bokaru, Ishmael, Shirai, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Whew! Did you catch all that? <laughs> all right, moving on to easier to pronounce words. John chapter 6, verses 22 to 44. The next day the crowd that had stayed on the that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat and they realized Jesus had not gone with them 
several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. They answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, Stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me, and at the last day I will raise them up. Thank you for joining me for today's reading through the Bible in 365. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your head doesn't hurt from all of the mispronounced names of places and people. It would be so much easier if I could just read it in my head, but you can't hear what my head is saying. So you just got to deal with the mispronunciations. <laughs> hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.